you know, in, in this series, it's, uh, I, you know, I don't know what to make of it with Anthony Davis. He went from Wilt Chamberlain in game one to Neville Chamberlain in game two. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to make of it. I do know it. my British prime minister history. There you I go. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> appeasement, <laughs> the appeasement, um, you know, so I, 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 yeah. I don't know what to make of this team as they head home to take on the Warriors. What, what, do, you, what do you make of it? Ramona. You know, the, the same thing happened in the Memphis series, right? They had they won game one, and then they kind of coasted in game two. It didn't see the same energy and urgency in game two, and I think they were tired, you know, playing with house money after getting that first that first win. But also, Golden State was going to respond. Um, I also thought Draymond Green's defense on Anthony Davis was was formidable. I mean, it was that Draymond is one of the greatest. I, I would put him up there as one of the best defenders in NBA history in terms of. I mean, about, last series he he was guarding De'Aaron Fox, and this series he's he's defending Anthony Davis. That's ridiculous yep. that he can do that. And I I can't believe that the same guy can can guard those two players really well too. And um, I thought he made AD's life a lot harder. He was the Warriors just basically said we're just going to be physical with Anthony Davis. We're just going to make him very uncomfortable. And it's not really how the Warriors play. I mean, you know, they're they're known as a sort of uh, they play fast and it's curry, the curry flurries, right? And play hitting threes and, and, and they move the ball and they have that sort of organized chaos. But they can be physical when they need to be. And, and that's what they're going to do the rest of the series on Anthony Davis. And he then has to adjust. And I think he will come home. Well, and again, you know, uh, Draymond, as you bring up, Ramona Shelburne here on the Rich Eisen Show, you know, he, he's, he's gone in these playoffs from – the, the guy who we all thought would never appear again after he hit – you know, King James and the crown jewels all those years ago and yeah. cost his team there. And he reared, he reared his, you know, ugly foot, I guess, onto the chest of <laughs> Sabonis. And we're all wondering if, if he's even a viable piece anymore. And, and he shows again, he's just a hall of famer, Matt. He's a hall of famer as they yeah. come. So uh, watching these warriors, I can't help but think about the deep dive. I'm going to read. Maybe you'll write it. Maybe someone else will write it. It's coming after this season. And it's going to either be yeah. about another championship run or one that came short. What will the deep dive about this Warrior season reveal? Do you think, Ramona? What do you, you think? You know what? Um, I because I'm definitely going to write it. I, I've already been planning on that, right? I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First of all, so you know, I was planning for it last series because we thought when they went down 0-2 against the Kings, we we're like, oh man, you better get up there and get ready to write the last dance story, right? <laughs> right. Like, maybe it is. Okay. Yeah. And. I was doing a call with my editor. I'll give her a shout out. I'll say, you know, my her name's Christina Daglas. And we were, we were talking. She goes, I don't know. Is it really the last dance? Is that, was that really the tension point here? And I go, you know, you're right. Cause Steve Kirk, Steve Kirk keeps saying like, I was a part of the last dance in Chicago. And this is not that because the last dance started when Jerry Krause, Bill Jackson's not going to be back. Like he was already hiring his replacement. And so they knew it was over. It's like, you know, I don't know if you watch Succession or anything, oh, but yeah. like when they say this is the last season of Succession at the beginning of the year, like you kind of know what's going to happen at some point during the final season, right? I don't want. Are we far enough past? Yeah, no, no. Event, or, like, we're, you know, I like, think we're still. Part? Yeah, no. we're still in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're still in that in that gray zone. Um, but like, I think everybody kind of recognizes, like, it is. You know, we're we're in a place where this is. This is not necessarily over. I know everybody, we talk about the $500 million next year and how can they keep them all together. We do all that. I don't, I don't know that it's over. I think it gets harder. Hmm. Being around that team, there's a sort of um, quality, and you ask what the deep dive is about. Um, I think what these playoffs have made very clear is that there's no reason to break up these three guys. These guys, they might be getting older, and I know they, the Warriors tried to take the two-pronged approach, like let's have the older guys and then, and then draft and develop a new generation to take over for them and pass the baton. And, and watching these playoffs, guys, the younger generation is not ready, and they're not cut from the same cloth. And I think you just keep the, this group together as long as you can. So if there are trades to be made, I mean, I, you know, you're going to you're going to hear stuff. Mm -hmm. Draymond's going to decide on his player option. Clay makes forty three million dollars in an expiring deal. I'm sure they'll entertain all of those discussions and they'll, they'll have to really work through it. But, you know, if I'm if I'm Golden State and you want to still have a chance to win a title every year, you just keep those three guys together and you 
you do what you got to do with everyone else. You know, keep Wiggins, and I don't know what you say about – I don't know what happens with Jordan Poole. I don't know what happens with Kaminga and Moody and some of the young players that, you know, they've gotten chances to develop. And, and Poole, I think, has done a good job, but he, he hasn't really given anyone the confidence that he's going to be the next Steph, right? Um, so I, I think it's – these three guys are just – they're still there, and they're still together, and they, they should just stay together. For as long as, as long as they can, because they, those that that combination works, and and maybe that deep dive is really just about fighting for it, you know, proving that you're still there, you, you know, it's not gonna look as as young or quick or pretty as it did in 2015, but they still know how to make adjustments, they still know how to win, they still know how to have big games when they need them. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 